Welcome to the show, the one hour live show where we talk about all things reselling. We're full time resellers. He's Chris. I'm Jason. And this is another episode of Two Flippin' Dudes. On tonight's show, we've got a special guest joining us live. He's a fellow reseller. He's on TikTok sharing what he's learning. And tonight, he's on our show. David at Lime Creek Boutique will be with us. So get your questions ready for David, and we'll bring him on a little later. Whether it's your first time with us or if you've been here before, thanks for joining. And as always, Chris, welcome to the show. How's your week going? Man, week's been good, Jason. Thanks uh, thanks for having me. Great intro. New intro tonight, too. I like New that. New intro. That was smooth. You're looking fresh tonight. You got some good stuff behind you. I'm curious what's hanging on the wall behind you. But yes, it's been a it's been a good week. Last week was better. Uh, frankly, I, I crushed last week. I, I listed 101 items, which I think I mentioned last week. I was on pace for my best listing week ever, and 101 was definitely my record for the week. This week is nothing like that. It's been a uh, uh, my my listing has been a lot slower. I've been working on some behind the scenes stuff, and like today. I just sort of took advantage of the fact that I don't work for anybody. Uh, wasn't really feeling it today. Wasn't feeling at my best. So really took most of the day off today. But um, yeah, so it's kind of like the ups and downs of, of owning your own business. Last week, I feel like I crushed and uh, was on top of the world. And this week, I'm like, man, I ain't crushing anything. I think the world <laughs> crushed me. But that, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. That's part of this thing, right? Yeah, that's a, it's a funny cycle that I've experienced many times over and over. The ups and the downs of being your own boss. You know what? And it's I'm not like upset about it. I'm just sort of embracing it. Like it is what it is, and it's cool. Yeah. And this is sort of this is what I signed up for, and I knew this was part of it. And frankly, I'm not like um, I've never been a call out sick sort of person. I sort of grew up in the in the business world in the in the restaurant business, right? And there was just there was no sick days in the restaurant business, at least not if you were a top performer, and certainly not if you were one of the, the people running uh, the operations. So. It was just no sick days. There was no calling out sick. There was no snow days. I was, you know, I was in New Hampshire at the time, and it's just not built into me to take kind of to take days off. But part of the reason why I got into uh, reselling and, and, and committed to doing this full time was I wanted to be able to take off days when I can and have that flexibility. So this yeah. isn't exactly the dream. Like, hey, take like most of a Thursday off <laughs> because you're not feeling great. That's not what I was sort of dreaming of, right? But it's nice to be able to do that. Right? Yeah, having the flexibility is key. Yeah. So what's uh, what's good with you? How's your week? Man, it's been a good week. This past weekend, uh, our family got together, celebrated um, celebrated three birthdays at my aunt and uncle's house. We had a bunch of people I haven't seen all together at once just because of uh, this past year. So, I mean, it was a good time, refreshing time, um, sitting around the pool and, and barbecuing and things like that. So got some good quality time with family. And uh, yeah, this week has been... Um, I would say, you know, I this week for me is your last week where I'm just putting my head down going. I've gotten a bunch of listings up and finally gotten back up to that higher amount um, from the sell off a few weeks ago. So it's been a solid week. How are sales keeping up for you? You know, sales have been sales have dipped some and uh, um, well, on eBay, I should say they, they've dipped for sure. And uh, that's been kind of the frustrating thing, but I guess that's part of it, right? Um, I think, uh, you know, we had a couple of really solid weeks in April. Uh, I mean, really solid. And then this past week or two, it's um, kind of plateaued a little bit for me personally. Um, what about you? For me, sales are sort of uh, chugging right along, especially if we're talking uh, unit sales, like number of sales uh, per week. Um, our Still doing really great. I've seen a, a like I'm not selling a lot of big ticket items uh, lately the last couple of weeks. So sort of my average sale price is down. So my dollar sales are down, but units are crushing. In fact, last week was the most uh, like number of units that I sold um, in a week ever. So I sold 58 items last week, which is, is a record for me, which is cool. The numbers weren't a record for dollars, but um, yeah. And I think this week I'm on pace. I'm just kind of, I'm looking over at my, uh, my sales board and like how I keep track of my productivity, 16, 21, 30. I think I'm at 30, uh, let's see, seven. I think I'm at 36 sales right now. And it's, it's Thursday oh, wow. evening with a, with, uh, I guess two and a half days left of, of sales to happen or, you know, 2.25, I guess. Right. So I, I could, <laughs> I could approach that 58 unit uh, record again. So we'll see. Yeah. And I should say I'm with you on that. I, 
my sales this month have been better than they have been in about a year and a half. So that's definitely a reason to celebrate. I think I got really excited because of the way that they picked up in April. I mean, they just like shot out of the cannon. It was looking and uh, looking like it was going to be way up there. And now it's kind of slowed down. So I can't complain. Um, and yeah, units for me as well are up um, higher than pretty much since January of 2020. So, <laughs> but you had another, you had another milestone besides units uh, listed and units sold, right? This, this past month or this month has been a record month for you. Yeah, actually. So sales dollars for this month, um, I think yesterday or I think Tuesday, actually, I, I officially passed March. March was previously my best month of, of sales dollars. Um, and uh, I passed that on Tuesday. So April is now uh, my best month ever for sales, which is really awesome. Of course, I'm expecting that um, for a couple of reasons. I've been full time now for this is my really my fifth month um, full time. So obviously, I've been listing more stuff and building my inventory. So I expect sales to go up. Um, but also, I think we, you know, uh, we've talked about it a lot. Like um, sales go up anyway, seasonally, especially both you and I are, are heavy into clothing. Um, those sales tend to go up March, April, May are usually the hot months for that. So we're experiencing that. We're also experiencing those wonderful things like people coming, you know, out of lockdowns in a lot of places, uh, vaccinations going way up, consumer confidence uh, 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 numbers like going way up. So yeah, stimulus checks out there and all that stuff. So. But yeah, I sort of expected it. Um, but that said, even when you expect it, right, it's nice when it actually materializes. I kept telling all of y'all, like I was telling you, I was telling anyone who's listening, look, sales are going to come back and they're going to come back in a great yeah. way. And I hope they are for everybody. Every business model is a little different, obviously, and uh, the ebbs and flows of business. But I hope it's coming back for everybody. But certainly what we've been talking about is in large part coming true. Yeah. And I, I do want to point out, because I think you mentioned it a week or two ago on the show, we're talking about blazers and how... Once things start to open up, you know, events are taking place, weddings, things like that. People are going to start looking for blazers, sports coats, thing. And I know you have, and I have as well. I've probably sold in the last couple of weeks, maybe three or four blazers. I think you've sold close to that much, or if not more. I think um, I've sold three or four just this week alone uh, on blazers, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and those are items, obviously, that you're going to get more than you would a dress shirt. It definitely helps out the average sales price. So, um, if you're looking, if you're watching and looking for a way to increase your sales price, start looking in the sport coat section. You can find some good brands there. So, yeah, I mean, I'm picking up sport coats on average. I'm paying four to six dollars for sports coats, which is, I mean, frankly, pretty comparable to what I'm paying for shirts. Um, but mm -hmm. the sales price for them are are hovering like in the 30s and 40s, whereas shirts I'm paying, you know, I'm getting like 25 to 30 dollars typically. So, and sometimes yeah. paying more for a shirt than a blazer. <laughs> Sometimes paying more for a shirt than a blazer for yeah. sure. On frankly, Goodwill around here, I'm paying more for shirts than blazers, and I haven't been doing a lot of Goodwill lately because yeah. of their prices. But at that at Goodwill, I can buy blazers for cheaper than I can buy shirts, which is kind of funny. But well, I th yeah, if you think about the amount of fabric, the amount of space it's taken up on the rack, and I mean, I know that Goodwill thrift stores get those things all the time, and they're like, let's just price to move it, which is good for us. Um, yeah, and I see that too. What you just mentioned, I think upper 30s, low 40s is probably what I average on those those sales. So it's it's kind of like selling a pair of shoes, but you're getting it a lot cheaper than you typically would find a pair of shoes. So better margin. I would love to see some <clears throat> shoe sales pick up. I am seeing dress shoes sale like sales still lagging. Um, I did a lot better last year with dress suit shoes, but it's been I think since COVID. If I look back at the numbers, I'd say that the dress shoes are way down. Cole Haan specifically is one of my big brands, and that has not bounced back. I don't know if you've seen Cole Haan bouncing back at all. You know, I was just thinking about that today because I was listing women's shoes on Facebook and just wondering like what has happened to the Cole Haan market specifically because that was a uh, that wasn't like. I would pick up so many of those and now I'm stuck with them in my store. I can't move them for 30 bucks. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on with that market. I'll have to, I don't know if it's just that, uh, the price is too high or if people, I don't know. I don't know if competition has increased. I would imagine that's the case, but <clears throat> I think dress shoes will come back to you. I think it's just going to take some, some time, people getting back to the office, people doing business travel again, um, people going to conferences, yeah. Yeah, that's weddings, true. things like <laughs> that. I mean, work from home isn't real. People are still buying running sneakers because they're running right. And they're doing yeah, recreation. 
but work from home, you're not still buying dress shoes because you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Dressy. Yeah. So that's a very good point. Can you imagine wearing like a, a fancy pair of wingtips, right? And just jumping on a Zoom call. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I know you're probably wearing really nice shoes. With your right? yoga pants. <laughs> yeah, yoga, yoga pants, like a dress shirt and uh, some, uh, some wingtip. Oh, the, uh, the 2020 dress attire for business professionals, I guess. Yoga pants and uh, some kind of dress top. Absolutely. I imagine that that's exactly what you're wearing. Yeah, we've got my yoga pants on right now, Chris. <laughs> your Lulu, your Lulu lemon. Um, maybe we should. That maybe that's what we should be selling because uh, people are working from home. They're looking for yoga pants. At least women are. I don't know a lot of guys wearing yoga pants, but anyways, well, let, let's move on, Chris. We, we digress. <laughs> Seems like a good moment for a segue there. <laughs> Well, if you, if you don't know this show, we usually in the very beginning, we do a little show and tell. We show some items that we've thrifted this past week from thrift stores. We give you some brands. We tell you why we picked it up. We try and explain what we paid for it, what we should get for it, but what makes that item unique and why it stuck out to us. So, Chris, I know you've got some items you want to show off. So why don't you take it away? Absolutely. Um, starting off with, uh, I mean, this is... you. Anybody who's watched my content or watched this show um, knows that I'm like heavy on golf polos right now because this is the season for that. Um, and we have several months still left of golf polo season. So anyway, without further ado, this is one of my favorite golf polo brands to pick up. There we go. Uh, RLX. Uh, so it's a Ralph Lauren brand, but it's specific RLX and really attractive pattern on this shirt too. I, I find that pink shirts uh, tend to do better than other colors and sell faster and maybe for a few extra bucks. And then just a really loud kind of pattern on this thing. I love it. And you actually, you can see the tag on there. I picked this up at half off day yesterday. So this is a $5 tag. I paid wow. 250 for this shirt. This yeah. is probably uh, 25 to 30 uh, on the RLX. And this one I'd say probably on the higher end because um, yeah, it's just a bright color. Quick question on that logo. Um, is that like a specific course or is it just like a local course close to so you? Let me look. Um, so I don't, I haven't played golf since I was a youngster. Um, Paul, I've actually sold, I don't know the details of this course, but uh, I have sold a shirt that had the same course on it. I think it's okay. Paul Mathia. Um, yeah, so, I've never, I've never heard of it, but it's, I was wondering if it was like one of those tournament PGA tour tournament courses, which kind of drives the value up. I don't think that one is per se. I don't but. think so. Um, I think it is a nice course locally. What I'll typically do, I don't do it all the time, but on shirts that do have the golf course logo on it, what I'll do is I'll just Google the golf course. Um, and then like, oh, that's a good one, idea. I'll say it's a, it's a, a high end golf course in Tampa, Florida. Right. So that when the buyer like is looking at that, you know, that funky logo and they're like, what is that? And I just say, Oh, it's a high end course in Tampa, Florida. I think people can relate to like a Florida golf course and they're like, Oh, okay, cool. And if it's private, I'll mention it. If it's, you know, if it is on the tour, I'll, I'll mention that too. There's actually, um, interesting. This has nothing to do with flipping, but there, there is a PGA golf tournament happening, uh, right down the street from me, uh, in Palm Harbor, which is about a 15 minute drive from where I sit right now. So, some of the big dogs are actually, it's not one of the big marquee tournaments, but some of the big dogs are playing. Um, Dustin Johnson's playing in that tournament. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the number one, the number two players in the world are playing and a few of the other like top kind of 25 fellows are playing about 15 minutes down the road. I kind of forgot about it. I'm, I might still go to it this weekend if there's some tickets, just a fun way to spend an afternoon. Yeah. It is a fun way and relaxing. I'll go. Uh, so that's one shirt back onto Back on the flip and I'll go another direction with the second shirt, complete opposite direction. Uh, so we're going LL Bean. That's a vintage tag. You know that. Money right there. And Love that tag. Size large. I don't know if you, yeah, you can probably see it, but it says made in the USA on there too. So that's a good tip off that LL Bean hasn't been made in the USA for a while. So you know it's vintage when you see that. And this is Cordero. Yeah. So pretty rad shirt there. Uh, so kind of the opposite. This is great. Mountain winter wear. And, uh, and then I had like a, a, you know, so from Maine and then I had a, a golf polo with a golf course here from Florida. So, yeah, I like that piece. That's a great, great addition to the show right there. LL Bean in the house. That's definitely, um, I think that's my favorite find of this week. I know we play a game later on and I'm supposed to show like the coolest find, but if you're talking like what I think is my favorite find, it's that LL Bean cord right there. 
Yeah. And Neb asked what makes it a vintage Owl Bean. Well, Chris alluded to it earlier. There are obviously a few ways you can tell, but one is the made in the USA. Um, the other is the tag. Usually if you see that Freeport, Maine under the LL Bean, um, I don't think any of the new tags are doing that. I think it just says LL Bean. So that's a new tag. The Freeport, Maine is, is a vintage more than likely. But Neb and anyone else who's wondering, there's a site you can, I'm sure you can Google this, but there's a website that looks up vintage tags. And a lot of times I'll just Google vintage LL Bean tag and you can kind of tell a few different um, variations of tags. Just, so. just Google vin vintage LL Bean <clears throat> tags and you'll get some pretty good results and you'll be able to check that one out. I didn't Google that one, uh, but just we seal. I mean, I buy and sell a lot of LL Bean and I know that tag. I'm guessing that that's probably a late 80s tag on that one too. And the fact that it's made in USA is kind of like a, a cheat code on that. Yeah, I agree. Well, Chris, I'm going to... Um... I'm going to keep with this vintage vibe and I'm going to show you this piece right here. Check Ooh, that out. I haven't seen that tag before. That's rad. The, I, honestly, I've, I've never seen this vintage Orvis tag either. Um, I've seen a couple other different types, but that's the first time I've seen this one. So I haven't done the research yet to know how old that is, but this is kind of like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of like a Pendleton. It's a wool shirt. It's got the Pendleton feel. Um, it's like the heavier fabric. The only downside of this is it is a smaller, it's a smaller shirt. So it's either small or medium, I'd guess probably small. And a lot of times these older shirts um, shrink in time. So um, that's kind of a bummer, but it was one of those pieces that just based on the tag, I was like, I can't leave this in the store. Even if it's a men's small, I have to buy that. So um, four box, I mean, that will go somewhere. Oh yeah. I think that'll sell. I actually sold a men's small LL bean last week in just a matter of like, it was like a day or two. Um, so yeah, it was a kind of a unique piece. It was like a cool max was like the material on it. Um, and it was uh, definitely like a kind of a more of a fishing material, but yours is pretty unique too. I think that'll sell quick. I actually picked up another LL bean small piece uh, this week too, because it was like a polyester nylon cotton knee blend or something like that. So I know yeah. we are both, petrified of size small men's shirts but i think there's exceptions to that rule for sure yeah and, and for those watching that may be asking why did you pick up that small definitely because it's so unique there you're not going to find any shirts out there like that so you may have a handful of people who are size small looking for that shirt one pops up and then it may get sold so that's why we would consider that and not like a ralph lauren mm -hmm. small um switching gears take a look at the pop in colors on this shoe Check Ooh, that out. Look fancy. at that. Isn't that beautiful? There's the brand. Onitsuka Tiger. Also Asics. So I got Asics and then the uh, Onitsuka Tiger in the title there. These shoes are excellent condition. It's, it's a smaller men's size and it's also got the women's size on the tag too. So I think I listed this in women's just because it was more in that sweet spot range for women's than men's. Like men's seven or women's eight and a half. So listed these as women's. There were no, no sold comps, no, not even shoes listed the same shoe. So I really just had to guess. I looked for like 10 or 15 minutes. I did a Google search and I was just like, all right, they're unique. I'm going to price them high and see what happens. So, but, uh, you know, these Onosuka Tigers sell really well. It was probably the third or fourth that I found. I don't get them that often, but, um, they yeah, usually don't last long. I've never heard of that. What I mean, obviously, no Asics. I've never heard of An Anasuka Tigers. I mean, what? Here, let me show you again, oh, just so you can see it. And there may be some other people out there that don't know it, but there's the. That's how you uh, spell it. And what? What's the? Um, is there like what is the brand? Like, what's the relevance to that that brand? I never heard of it. I'd be curious if anybody else in the in the chat has heard of that brand. You know, um, I don't really know. I don't know the story. I mean, I could guess, but I could be wrong. So. Um, I, I want to say they're like the early, uh, the early, um, like vintage Nikes. Remember like the old, old school, like seventies, eighties Nikes are very similar to what these, this brand used to make. So I don't know if there's a correlation there or not, but I don't know. Um, it's kind of like that Puma, the shoe, like the Puma shoes, um, like those casual shoes that have the little swish thing going down the side it's not the swish but you know what i mean right that's a very similar look for the for that brand swoosh by the way and that's trademarked <laughs> <laughs> not nike but puma uh we had a question come in and i want to get to it because this was um 
A question from a viewer, Kathy, asked about sending offers to watchers. She said the number of offers that actually go out to interested buyers is less than the number of watchers it says I have. Do you know why that happens? I actually know why this happens because as a buyer, this has happened to me. Um, and Kathy, when whenever you search for something, so you're looking to buy something, you go into a listing. Um, I've actually done this with like a pair of jeans. I was looking to buy a pair of jeans. I didn't end up watching them, but I just clicked in and then I got an offer and I was like, how did that happen? Um, so somehow when you send offers, you're sending them to the watchers, but you're also sending them to those people that recently clicked into that listing. Um, so I don't know how much time goes by before that doesn't happen, but so it's watchers and recent viewers is what it is. So that's actually a good reminder. I, I mean, I constantly send offers to watchers on eBay. So I just went in and um, noticed that I had one. So went and, and sent one just now. Um, but I think what, what, I think you answered the question correctly. Like I think your, your statement was right, obviously, but I think she was asking the opposite. Like, why is it less than the number of total watchers? Um, Oh, was it? Did I miss that? Yeah. And, um, so oh, you were answering right, like, yeah, you're right. Cause sometimes you'll look at it and what you're answering is sometimes you'll have zero watchers, but you can still send an offer. Um, and that's because somebody had clicked on the item and maybe they sat there and looked at it for like a few minutes. And I think that cues something with eBay to send it, but also it can oh, be okay. less than because you might've already sent uh, an offer mm -hmm. on that item. So say you have three watchers today, you might send an offer yeah. today uh, to one of those watchers, but you might've sent it already to two other watchers like a week ago, if that makes sense. So it won't send it every time to all of the watchers. It'll send it to whoever you haven't sent that offer to yet. Yeah, thanks for pointing out, Chris. I read that and then totally saw it different in my mind. So it's all right because we answered kind of two different questions about that sort of cryptic offers to watchers thing. And that's actually fairly new, right? It used to just be to watchers, but I'd say probably six months ago or so, they, they changed it to that you can send it to people who have like clicked on the listing before. Yeah. And uh, Lynn5285 says you, that's correct. You can turn it off um, if you wish. So, um, those of you watching are now really informed on sending offers to watchers. It's huge. I get a lot of sales through doing that. So, yeah, I do that obsessively as well. Like, I'll a batch will come in, I'll send them out probably a few times a day just to see if I can snag someone um, really quickly. So, well, Chris, we've got a guest tonight and I'm excited to bring him in to our show. I couldn't be more excited to have have David on here from Lion Creek Boutique. Uh, he's killing it. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, he's one of the people that I've truly been watching a lot uh, in, far, in terms of TikTok content. I don't watch a ton of YouTube. I don't watch a ton of TikTok for, for reseller content. Not, a, not at least a recently. I have historically over time. But David's one of the people that I do uh, make it a point to really kind of watch his stuff because I'm learning from him all the time. And he's killing it. Like, this, he's just selling so much darn stuff. So I'm just fascinated to, to watch him grow. And uh, he's just got a really great affect about him. You know, uh, there's a lot of people who are reseller folks who come off as braggy or come off like they know it all. And I'll tell you what, David's just like really a matter of fact. He's like, this yeah. is what's going on in my business. And I wanted to share it with you and let me know if you have questions. And I'd love to, I'd love to hear about your sales over the past week. So I'm a big, big fanboy of David and what he's got going on over there. For, so for him to be on the show, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah, me too. So that was a great intro. Let's bring him in. Welcome, David. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Glad to be oh, here. Yeah. Yes, great to have you. So thanks for joining us. Well, David, um, I mean, uh, you're a, a longtime watcher of the show, 18 episodes. Um, <laughs> when I say long time, so I know you kind of know how this goes when we've had guests in the past, but why don't you go ahead and tell those watching that may not know you who you are. Give us a little intro of whatever you might think that would be interesting for us to know about you. Yeah. So my name's David. I go by Line Creek Boutique and I've been a part-time reseller for a very long time. I actually started on eBay in 1998, um, selling just a handful of items throughout the years then kind of went to college and didn't do that anymore. And then I really got into eBay again in 2019 as a 
let's call it full-time, part-time reseller. And then I did that for about a year. And last September, September 2020 is when I became a full-time reseller on eBay. And since then, um, I know, Chris, you were just talking about record months. Um, April for me is going to be a record month as well in terms of sales. It's just um, gone from uh, you know, that September to, to where I am now is, is just night and day. And I had done a video uh, a little while back uh, for, for people getting into it of last, uh, I, I think it was last January to this January, and just the huge change of, uh, you know, where, where I was to where, where I was, you know, in January now. And just to try to show people that, yes, hey, look, over a year, you know, I, I was at Point one, and now I'm at a hundred. So it is doable. And, and here's here, you know, baby steps to get there. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. Well, that's awesome. And congrats on such a great month. Um, Thank you to be where you are. That's good to hear. So, I mean, I know you start, you said you started in 1998, you're an OG eBayer. <laughs> Um, and then you you went full time in 2019, or you started picking it up in 2019. You recently actually went full time, right? Yeah, September of last year, I went full time. Okay, so 2019 is when you started reselling again. Yeah, exactly. And basically, how that came about, I, I, I mean, I was selling um, on Craigslist when that was the thing to do. And what what I would do there is is completely different than to how I'm reselling now on Craigslist. I would sell bigger items. So I would I would source in the summer, and and this is when I lived in New England. I would source snowblowers all summer long. I would tag sale for snowblowers. And my, my wife's probably shaking her head at this. I literally would have a shed full 15, 20 <laughs> snowblowers. And if they didn't work, I was able to work on them and fix them and get them going. And come October, November, it was just this, this sale frenzy snowblowers. I could literally sell through them in, in a week once wow. that first storm came. So that I, I did a lot of that. I've, I've done snowmobiles, boats, a lot of big items. And then, you know, we, we moved, um, um, from New England down to, to where we are now in Georgia. And uh, I was really literally cleaning out my closet. And I said, hey, I'm going to try to sell some of this stuff on eBay. And that's what got me back to it, just like that. So, Yeah, and it seems like that. I mean, the part about just going in, into your house, into your closet, pulling out stuff, selling on eBay. That I mean, there's so many people that get started just like that. And I know you had, obviously, entrepreneurial um side ho hobbies before that. But um, what I mean, when did you make the switch from, uh, you know, I'm going to do this now as like a side hustle, I'm going to build this up? Like, how did that come about? To, to, to do the side hustle? Yeah, from like just selling a few things in your closet to I'm actually going to go out and look for stuff now and flip it online. Yeah. So I had a, I had a mental plan in my head to, um, I've always wanted to retire early. Um, so, th and that's a whole nother story, but this was part of that plan. Um, and, and once I saw in, in literally just a month, some, some traction behind it, and I'm not talking huge numbers, I'm talking like making $50 in a month, right. By selling, uh, uh some items from my closet, I said, this was doable. And, and then I started thrifting once a week, uh, my local thrift shop and putting that stuff up there. And then the hundred dollars a month went to, I mean, $50 went to a hundred, went to 200. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. And, and I knew that this could go even further. And, and then it sort of just became, okay, I'm going to start doing this. And for me, when I started part-time, it was a little bit different. I, I was traveling for work, so I wasn't home. So I actually had to run auctions and I'd run my auctions um, to, to end on Friday nights, Friday and Saturday, so that I was here to be able to pack them and ship them. And then Sundays was my listing day and I would start all my auctions to end the following week when I was home. So I, I started a little bit different. And then and then really what, once everything happened last year, um, I was able to work remote. And that was the first time I started running um, Buy It Now. And that really just started, you know, kicking things off. And, you know, the light bulb went off in my head. And I said, man, this, this, can, this can go. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, and let me just remind those watching, if you have a question for David, please put it in now and we'll get to it in a sec. But, um, you know, I've seen a few, a few of your videos. Obviously, I've, I've followed your TikTok channel. And I know a little bit of what you sell. But 
what is it that you really love selling? Like, what are the things that you like looking for at the thrift stores that are more exciting than other things, I guess, for you? So f for me, I, I get excited about a lot of things. I mean, um, I, I've recently gotten to golf over the last eight weeks. And, and if you've seen my channel, I've, I've really, it's all new to me. So I'm, I'm trying to just show what I'm learning as I go. And, and one of the things that I've learned um, is just, uh, I'm looking, I've got some golf clubs here, handles on golf clubs now when I can spot certain handles and I know what it is. And it's like, ooh, I get so excited. I'm like, I know what that is. And, and I know that it can sell. So so that that's really exciting. And then just some of the, the bigger things, like I sold that four foot Batman. I don't know if anyone's seen the, the video on that, but that was just, a, you know, an awesome find, one of a kind type of find. And, and yeah. I think those are the things that drive me more than anything. Those, those one-offs that, yeah. that you don't typically see, you might not know a lot about. Um, but once you, you, you look them up, it's like, Oh wow, this is fantastic. So. Well, that's awesome. So just out of curiosity, how do you ship a four foot Batman? <laughs> Carefully. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's one of my other things that, that I, I try to, you know, let people know. I, I see a lot of people sell smaller items, right? That, that they fit in a poly bag or a small cardboard box is don't be afraid of the bigger items, right? Yeah. yeah you, you have to pack them and they take a little bit more time, but there's definitely money to be had there. Mm -hmm. And he, he got packed. It was three bags of um, biodegradable peanuts all around him and he arrived oh, wow. very safe. So. Oh, cool. So here's my question. You know, I think this is more of something that we ask resellers a lot, you know, want to know what is your biggest, the biggest flip you've ever had on one item? Oh, um, on one item I flipped, this was my one and only Facebook marketplace flip. And I did it last March. I did a pop-up camper. So I had bought a camper and it, it needed, um, it ended up needing a $38 part. So I bought the part, I fixed it and I flipped it. I think it was just over two weeks later. Um, I bought it for 1500 and I sold it for 2,900. Wow. Doubled your money. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And just the $38 part. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, that, that's the thing with a, a I, I don't want to say a, a lot of larger items that might not work, especially like I was talking about the snowblowers before or boats or snowmobiles, those items, a lot of people, um, you know, when, when they break, they don't know how to fix them. And, you know, that's a skill set that can be very useful to it. If, if you know how to fix those type of items, because you can pick them up on the cheap, um, work on them. And most times it's a, it's a minor problem that'll cost very little money to fix. So. Hmm. That's awesome. So David, you, you said something earlier that kind of um, that resonated with me, with me quite a bit. And you were talking about retiring early. Um, so stopping working someday. And I think a lot of people who are part time can resonate with, with that. Like, hey, this is a great way for me to earn some extra money so that in the you know, that I could do things I want to do in my life, like vacations. We've heard people talk about like funding vacations through this or just, yeah, just being able to fund retirement. But now you've gone full time. So right now this is the full time income. So I'm guessing you gave up some things like maybe 401k. And, and I guess you definitely probably gave up the idea of like a, a weekly paycheck that you can count on, right? From a, in 5% in raises or whatever every year, right? So can you talk a little bit about like, what's that retirement plan sort of look like now? And I don't mean like dollars and cents, like how are you investing? But like, what's looking forward for your business? Like what's next? And how are you going to you know move towards that early retirement goal? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, ultimately for the business, I, 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 I'm very goal oriented. So, um, I, I've, I've done some videos on, uh, on that as well. Right. I've thrown out my goals and, and done, done the check. So in terms of retirement in, in early retirement, uh, again, without going into a ton of detail, this, this has been something that I've, I've been planning for, you know, 25 years now, actually probably young, since I was very young. So um, all that aside, for, for me, this is just, we're, we're going to snowball, snowball, snowball. And the ultimate goal, if, if I've got to throw one out there, um, is, is to continue to have fun with it. Um, for me, yes, uh, obviously making money is part of it. But once it's not fun anymore, um, I think that that becomes a drag, whether it's, you know, 
this job or any job. And, and right now, I'm just having so much fun with it. It's, it's just such a relief from the corporate world that I came from and having to deal with all of that, that this is like, I mean, this is like recess for me. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> That's so, awesome. I can see, I can see the joy on your face as you're, you know, there's certain things that you can pr- sort of fib and lie about. Right. But when you're talking about like loving what you do, right. You can see right through someone if they're not being honest about that. And you could see it just on your face that you enjoy doing this. Yeah. I mean, it is a ton of fun. And and for, for me, you know, a couple other things, right. There's not a 401 anymore. There's not, there's not, you know, certain things, but I can take, you, you were talking about it. I can take a vacation whenever I want. Right. I, I did the same thing. I, I did, maybe one listing today and, and Hey, that was okay. No, no one got in trouble. It was, it, it was fantastic. Um, you know, other things that I can do, put my, put my, my daughter on the bus or go pick her up from school, things that I just couldn't do before. So, um, you know, a lot of times people do focus on the money and, and, and don't get me wrong, that is part of it, but there's so many other benefits that, that come with this, you know, resale life that, that just for me outweigh, some of that dollars and cents. I hear you, man. I love it. Um, I know that like golf has just been this big new thing for you after doing snowmobile or uh, sorry, snowblowers for so long. What's kind of next on the horizon? What's something that you're fascinated about that you'd love to start getting into flipping? So I, I think there's two things that, that I've started to see um, toys, older toys. Um, I'm starting to, to learn about and um the, the vintage glassware, it's something that, uh, and, and I think it's one of these things that, and same for me, I've, I've talked about it before, being intimidated, right? I'm, I'm always intimidated to walk down that aisle in the thrift store because I don't know what I'm looking at, right? So the last couple of months, I've just been watching videos and studying and learning and, and you know, I, I, I've done one or two purchases and they've worked out in, in reaching out and asking questions. So those are probably two of the areas that I'm going to try to get into a little bit more, um, in the near future. I love it. You're talking to a couple of guys here, uh, two flipping dudes who have been getting into, into glassware and, uh, yeah, vintage dishware and China and stuff like that. So yeah, there's, I know that the thrift store, I, I know I'm walking past money all the time. I know at garage sales, I'm just walking past money that I just don't see, right. There's dollar signs in the bottom of these things. And I just, I don't, I don't see it. And that's fascinating to know that there's still, still, you know, there's still plenty more to learn. Yeah. It's almost never ending, right? It's just where, where you put your stop, right? Where do you want to stop learning? Because to, to your point, I, you can just continue on forever learning. There's just so much out there. And, you know, I think a lot of people are intimidated by glassware. They're, you know, they think it's going to break, but once you sort of get your system down packing stuff, and I wonder, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that you're there too. I don't know. I, I, I don't mind packing glassware. It doesn't take me much time. And I feel like I got a system down that works. I've shipped a lot of stuff and knock on wood, it hasn't broken yet. I mean, I know stuff will break, but I think people are scared of it. And I'll speak for myself. I was scared of, of selling that kind of stuff. I just assumed it was going to, it was all going to break, but I like shipping it now. I think it's actually, I think it's an easy ship. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I, I, I just shipped out a, a, a Coleman lantern. Um, and I just got a message um, from from the buyer right before the show that he had ordered two. Mine arrived safely. The other one did not. So oh. I was like, all right, that just goes to show <laughs> good packing worked. <laughs> <laughs> right. Buy your stuff from Line Creek Boutique. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to arrive safe and sound. So, David, I'm, I'm curious on that switch from corporate world to full time. I mean, walk us through that transition. Like, how did you prepare for that? Um, how did you decide this is the right time to go? And then what was it like, you know, when you did leave um, being your, you know, your own boss? So a couple of things. There was a, it was about a six month transition, I, maybe even a little longer. I knew that that. I was, I was going to be leaving. So I had time to, to ramp up. Um, but that said, even, even on the, the resale side, you know, the numbers weren't anything out of this world yet, but I knew they could be. So I didn't have any fear there. Um, I just ha- didn't have the time to put into it. So, um, th- you know, that time leading up to, it, I was building up the inventory. If, if you've seen any of my, um, lives, I, I, sh- I need to do a video on, I had, I had an opportunity to buy out a thrift store, um, before I went full-time. So I had a ton of inventory. 
So th- that was another um, big benefit for me that sort of helped uh, with the transition. I didn't have to worry about running out, you know, all, all the time to, to source. I can source in yeah. my, my, my own thrift store now. Um, and then just once I left there, meaning the corporate world and, and started doing it, it was just, it was, you know, left on a Friday and just started on a Monday full time <laughs> doing this. And it, and it was, it was great. I mean, you know, this full time is, again, it's, it's not, I, I just, yes, it's work, but it's not work, right? It's not having to deal with that corporate world, sitting in meetings, you know, having yeah. to do presentations, you know, et cetera, what, whatever it happens to be or, or what you're doing. It's not that. So it was actually a sigh of relief more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there, and there are obviously stressful parts of reselling, but it's different than, you know, the stress of a job like that. It's just yeah. a different reality. And, and that's a good point. I mean, there's a couple of things that I hear about people stress about returns, right? Uh, I'm going to get a return. And, and, and I've talked to people and I said, you can't, don't get into, don't not get into reselling because you're scared of a return. A return's like 0.001% of, of the items that you're going to sell. It's going to happen. Yes. For whatever reason, whether it's, you know, your fault or not, or whatnot, but don't get, don't not get into it because of that, you know, and, yeah. and, and you're stressing over something that you haven't even had yet. So worry about it when it comes about type of deal. Yeah, that's a really good tip. And then I want to leave with this question because we're almost out of time here and you kind of answered it there, but I, I want to give you an opportunity for maybe something else that you would answer on this question. Any advice to like new resellers who maybe first six months in they're just dabbling, getting started. You know, what, what can you say to those people that may be watching? Yeah, I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give is, you know, when you, when you're watching people's videos, whoever it happens to be and and you hear them say, Hey, I sold this. I'll just pick on Ralph Lauren, right? I sold this Ralph Lauren shirt. Um, you know, I paid $5. I sold it for 35. Don't run out and buy every Ralph Lauren shirt, right? You've mm. got to look at the details, right? It was a vintage Ralph Lauren. It had this logo. It was this size. Um, it was in these colors or it was bold stripe or color block or fancy pattern, right? And, and I think that's where people get hung up is, hey, I, I bought Ralph Lauren and it didn't sell. What am I doing wrong? Um, so I, I think, you know, don't just look at that first sentence or, or, or what the brand is. Um, look at age the tags model, you know, obviously depending on what it is, I, all those combined can make a $5 shirt or a $5 item into a 35 or $40 sale. Yeah. That's really great advice. I mean, that's, and I can tell, I mean, obviously we know you've your experience, but that's an experienced answer right there. Speaking on knowing what to look for, what's going to sell, what's not even in specific brands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been a blast, David. Um, these always go by so fast and it's so great. Even just in getting a little snippet of you know your business and your life and what's going on in your world. Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it. It's been great. And thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. We'll definitely have to have you on again at some point. Absolutely. Anytime. Look forward. Take care, right. guys. Take care. Thanks, we'll see you. He's awesome. But, yeah, he is awesome. What a great guy. Yeah. Super chill, and uh, he knows his stuff. I'll tell you, he knows his stuff. He's and he's just fun to listen to him talk. You can just tell how much he loves uh, loves doing this. Um, and like, he's just such a great member of our our reselling community. So, yeah, I I've learned a lot from him, and there's a lot of things that I'm now looking for just based on videos I've watched where he's like, I sold this for this much. So, um, I, we forgot to mention it, but if you're looking for uh, David on TikTok, Line Creek Boutique. If you look that up and you can find and follow him if you don't already. Um, and maybe David, if you're still watching, you want to put that in the chat, how they can get in contact with you or find you. Um, it would be great. And he mentioned the returns thing. Everyone's scared about it. Like I got a return that came in this afternoon and like, it's literally, it ain't no thing. You know, it's like, I haven't even opened it yet to, to go into it because it's just, it's not on my mind. It's, uh, it's, two to 2.5 percent of sales end up coming back to me david gave a really ridiculous number like 0.001 i'm like i want his <laughs> return rate but it, yeah i, mean, I know the point remains it's an you know two to two and a half percent is what yeah. i see that's pretty insignificant it doesn't even it doesn't even impact my day you know yeah exactly it's part of business it's gonna happen 
deal with it and move on. Yep. And speaking of moving on, Chris, it's time for a flipping game tonight. Let's play a flipping game. We got two flipping dudes. We're going to have one flipping winner. But first, we have five flipping questions. We're going to need you to hang out for question number five, audience participation. You're going to vote for who wins question number five and maybe for who wins the game tonight. Jason, you're our defending champion, so you are going first. What was your win What was your item that won? I'm trying to remember what won you last week. Oh, I guess I guess you had already won, and I and I had showed my item anyway. Sorry, segue. <laughs> question number one: biggest sale of the last seven days. Show us what you got. Well, uh, as it has been the theme recently, it's a uh, it's a past coolest find. These uh, remember these Br uh, Bruder Mercedes trucks. I'm just trying to read the message that you have there from a friend or oh, I guess oh, yeah, that was that was a, a low <laughs> offer on a Facebook sale there. Um, these actually went for a hundred dollars, so eighty plus twenty shipping. I picked these up for um, eight dollars a piece at Goodwill probably two months ago, and they finally sold. I waited on that right buyer, and there it goes on Facebook. Dang, did you have a lot of offers on those, or was it just sort of uh, to just kind of go? You know, I had a couple of watchers early and I had some low offers like half price and I knew what I had. So I just waited on that, that good offer to come in. You played your cards right. Nicely done. All right. My biggest sale actually came in just today. Uh, so you've probably seen some shoes, like some brand new Nike shoes, because I do play that, that brand new limited release uh, sneaker flip game, which is an interesting uh, game and and very different from a lot of from the the thrift flip and the garage sale flip game, but it's an interesting game. So anyway, I had uh, I'd entered a draw for these shoes on the sneakers app. It's S N K R S, which is Nike's app that they use to for limited release sneakers. So I won a draw yesterday, um, and I ended up paying with tax one hundred and forty nine dollars for these shoes. And ended up selling them within, I don't know, I think it was like 18 hours or something like that. Um, so they went today for 168 plus the $14 shipping there. So oh. and it's funny that flip game is interesting because those shoes aren't even in my possession yet, right? I won them. They haven't even shipped from Nike, yet, um, <laughs> but they've already sold. So what's going to happen is they're going to show up on my doorstep probably late next week. And I'm going to put a shipping label over the shipping label. That's the label to me. And I'm going to yep. put them back outside on the, on the front stoop and <laughs> they're going to go right back, uh, right back out with my postal worker the following day. So uh, not, I didn't get rich on this particular one, right? It's uh, after shipping and fees, I made 18 bucks on these, but I literally didn't leave the house and didn't do anything. I just entered the straw. It took me a few seconds. So you don't have to package. What a sweet deal. Some of those are, you know, I, I think I showed one a few weeks ago, like you can make a few hundred bucks by doing that. And sometimes you end up making 18. I wish that shoe was actually my size. I probably would have kept it. That's a really cool model of the Air Max 90, which is my favorite, like old school Nike shoe is that Air Max 90. Yeah, it's a sweet shoe. Yeah. So that's all right. Uh, Chris, you take round one. Nice win there. Round one, Chris with the shirts. One, Jason with the shoes. Nothing. Let's move to question number two. Biggest profit. This is why we do it. So, Jason, what is the biggest profit from the week after shipping and fees? All right. Largest profit. Uh, that's not it. <laughs> here we well, go. Check out this piece right here. Um, sold this on Facebook as well. So, you're seeing two of my sales in, in this game from Facebook. This went for $82. I picked it up for 10 bucks at a flea market, which I don't usually go to, but when my wife wants to go, I'll go check out stuff. And it had this really cool Marlboro, Marlboro I can never say that word. Uh, it says back here on the back in red, Wild Wild West, so or Wild West. So it was just very unique piece, um, great size. Well, large, not bad. But uh, profit on this was $55.41 on, on that Facebook sale. 5541. Nice profit, man. Good flip. Really cool piece, dude. Um, yeah. I remember when you picked that up and you had told me about it. I was like, that is just a really cool piece. All right. So, my biggest uh, profit of the week is right here on the screen is this Magnavox uh, DVD uh, TV combo unit. Uh, these are good items to look out for. They're not all super valuable. Um, but a lot of them are valuable and they're hot right now. It's big with like retro gamers. 
Uh, like a lot of vintage stuff, I don't really truly understand why these things are worth a lot of money. Uh, so I picked this up for $2 at a garage sale and it sold this morning uh, for full price, $69 plus $37.73 shipping. So I guess that's $108. And I ultimately made $59 profit on this item. It was only like, wow. it only ended up being 30 bucks to ship this thing from here in Florida to Brooklyn, even though it was 25 and change pounds. So, um, so yeah, biggest, that's my biggest profit of the week. Um, I will say those are good things to look out for. Um, but it also took me an hour and 10 minutes, like, like clock time to get that thing packaged up, um, the right way. So that yeah. from like selecting the right box to resizing that box to boxing it twice, um, and box putting the box. Rack up, wrap on it and taping it all up and, and then weighing it and dragging it out to, to the UPS store to drop it off. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's good profit and $59 for an hour and 10 minutes worth of work. Plus, you know, whatever time it took me to drag it home from the garage sale. But so it's like good and bad, like a really great profit, but also like stuff like that takes time. And honestly, like, I don't really love packing stuff like that. So I, I texted yeah. a buddy of mine, another reseller, Adam earlier today. And I was like, that's it. No more TV, D TV, DVD, <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, I think that's part of the reason why I had like a day today where I was like, I started my day packing that. And I was like, I don't want to do anything anymore. That was annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's like, look at the sale. And, ah, oh, look at the sale. Like I got to pack it up. I don't want to sound ungrateful. Right. Um, no. I, but I said like, Hey, I'd rather just flip like two shirts and make 59 bucks or three shirts and just throw them in Bali bags and beyond. Yeah. But it's nice to have a variety. It is fun to pick stuff like that up and talk about it. It does make this game, you know, this flip game a little bit interesting. I'll say that. But so anyway, Chris with the shirts to Jason with the, shoes nothing moving on to question number three where's the question number three tag oh here it is fastest yeah there we fastest go sorry, i can't remember who's fastest or slowest so let's see it jason all right let's see i gotta get my uh tabs lined up here all right let's go with this one check out this cabela shirt you can see like a really cool fish pattern on the front it's you can't tell but it's vented on the back Look at that picture. There you go. And this sold for, uh, sorry, this one sold. <laughs> What's going on here? This one sold for full price today in, uh, within 14 hours of listing it for $32.83. You can tell this one was 3XL tall. And the reason why I had that other one pulled up is because I have this exact same shirt in my store, men's medium, that's been sitting for wow. a year and a half, two years. It's crazy. I mean, here's an item that has been sitting here's an item that got fastest sale and it's all because of what david said earlier it's the size 3xl tall was, so 14 I hours super, is what i have i was super confused on that i was like wait he's got two of them one of them <laughs> was like 13 bucks the other but yeah what a great example of um you know big sizes especially the tall sizes um versus a medium so yep. what did you say was the hours on that i know it was good it was 14 hours okay. and went for 3283 Okay. I'm on fire this week. I wasn't feeling super confident coming into this week, but here I am on fire. I sold this Brooks Brothers 346 jacket. It sold same day. It sold in seven hours and 51 minutes. Um, this thing had a couple of things going for it. The um, stripes tend to, for me, have been selling a little bit better than just plain. And 46R is not really a big, big size, but um, definitely a, tends to sell better for me than, say, a 42 or a 40 or even a 38. So nothing really special about this blazer, um, but a quick sale on that one. Love that. Yeah. So uh, what did I say? Seven hours, 51 minutes. You are Probably. just sweeping this game quickly. I And honestly, I didn't have the first two items, uh, like question number one and question number two, the Magnavox and the sneakers both sold today. So as I was like waking up coming into today, I was like, I do not feel confident uh, about tonight's game. Like I'm going to get run out of the building. And then I had those two sales. So there we go. Chris with the shirts three, Jason with the shoes Zippo right now. Moving into slowest sale of the week. This is my favorite category. Jason, what was your slowest sale of the week? All right, here we go. Crocs. Probably won't ever pick these up again. 
<laughs> even men's XL, even new with tags. These were like Crocs board shorts, which I didn't know Crocs made board shorts. You obviously know about their shoes, but yeah, sat for a while. And this is one where I sent an offer to the watcher. The offer got accepted for 10 bucks plus the five shipping, $15. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. When did I list these? February 26th of 2019 for a total of 790 days on the market. Dang, I've actually never seen Croc shorts. I have, I did see a Croc shirt one time in a in a thrift store, and I w- I comped it, and I was surprised that the comps were so low. I, because Crocs is a is a good brand. It's a well known brand for the shoes. I've exactly, well but the shoes, not outside of the shoes. Interesting. All right. So what you my, got? My slowest sale here is definitely a mistake buy. Um, this is a brand that I used to pick up early in in my uh, clothing flip life. And this Nordstrom shirt, you can see the sold for price on that. Uh, I got rid of this thing for seven bucks plus five shipping. Despite my screaming low price on this shirt, I had it in my inventory since January 5th, 2019 for a total of 842 days in inventory. I never win this category because Jason always got this old stuff he's getting rid of. I think it's been... It's probably been a couple months since I won this category. Um, I might have won it maybe twice out of 18 shows now. Yeah, I mean, usually if it's over two years, it's mine. I mean, that's just because you started, obviously, after me. So, but yeah, nice. Four four out of four so far, Chris. I don't think we've ever had a four zip uh, show. I thought I had a chance with an 840 day, two day Nordstrom when that sold early in the week. I was like, well, I might get a point for that one, but I figured you'd come in with like a thousand thirty nine day something or other. But all right, well, let's move into uh, kind of the fan favorite here. So we're looking for best pick of the week. So we just showed you sales from the last seven days. Now we're going to look at the coolest find from this past seven days. You're going to vote on it. So if you think that Jason's find is the best find, the coolest find in your definition of whatever coolest or best is. Uh, go ahead and put J in the chat. If you think Chris's find is the best, go ahead and put a C in the chat, but don't do it yet. Let's wait till we show you the items. Jason, you're our defending champion. What's your coolest find of the week, man? Let me show you. It's hanging up behind me as I nice. sometimes do. So I was at Goodwill this week and they brought the, the fresh rack out and I saw this piece right here. Never heard of this brand before, but let me know if anyone out there has heard of Twisted Toucan. I had to look it up, but that's not the reason why I picked it up. Check out this print. It's got Pokemon. It's got Pikachu. Um, and I'm not a, a Pokemon expert, so I couldn't tell you the rest of these names. But look at this Hawaiian shirt right here. It's got some really great color, great characters on there. Um, I, I actually looked up because there's not really there's like one listing for this brand. It's not the same shirt, but it's the Twisted Toucan for like 55 bucks. So I had to go online. I looked up their website and it's a a Hawaiian shirt company that like customizes Hawaiian shirts. So obviously they made a Pokemon um, shirt and uh, I found it. So men's XL, I've got it listed around 50 um, because it's excellent condition selling it like new and kind of one of those things where I'd probably take an offer at 35 or 40 plus shipping. So that's cool, man. Really nice find. That's going to be tough to beat. I'm trying. I, I know probably less than you do even about uh, Pokemon. I think there's a I think the dinosaur is like Char- Charizard. Charizard. Or Char- Charizard. Char- Char- Charmander or something. I know like one of them is like their Nashville Clippers would be so disappointed in us right now. You know, we're letting oh, down. Mean, he'd be ripped right now. I, I go into his live sometimes and he's talking Pokemon and I was like, I'm just here to show you my love. I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> but the, they look really shiny and cool. Um, well, cool. I have, I have two things and both things are behind me. I didn't know what I was going to choose. Uh, I don't think it matters because what you had is really, really cool. So I'm going to go with this. Um, so for the Disney fans out there, uh, I picked up this set of four glasses. They are Walt Disney world branded. You can see, uh, Mickey mouse there on the front. I think we got an MGM theme going on and it says uh, 2000 on it right there on the back. And then you can see some other stuff. I guess this is MGM stuff on the side. It says Hollywood. And then, yep, there it is. Actually, I didn't even see the side. There you go. Disney Studios. So that big, like, iconic MGM thing. 
So picked up a set of four of these. I paid four bucks for them. And let's see, here's the other ones. It's kind of two and two. So here's the other. I guess that's Fantasia right there, right? And yeah. There we go. And actually, this one has Epcot on the back. So I guess there is some differences. Yep, Epcot. So two, 2000. So I guess this is officially vintage now, which is crazy to say because now these are 20 or more years old. So you can officially call them vintage. But um, not big money here. We're talking about maybe 20 bucks plus shipping on these is, is what comps are saying. But definitely a cool find. One of those things that's, um, I don't know, just makes it a little bit more interesting picking up something like that. This doesn't count. This is not for the vote, but I also picked up a, uh, a mug. And funny thing, this was at a different thrift store, but I picked up a Disney MGM Studios mug. Um, Look at you with a, a mug fire. At a different thrift store, but same exact theme, which is interesting. So cool find, I think. But we'll see. I don't know. That Pokemon <laughs> shirt is pretty fire. Well, fun fact on those glasses that you had right there you're showing as your coolest pick. I w worked at McDonald's. That was my first job when those things came out that summer. I didn't know you worked at McDonald's. That's fascinating. That was my, yeah, that was my high school job. And I bought some of those. I, I frequently would buy like McDonald's stuff, collector's pieces. Like I bought the, uh, the, uh, how old are those bears? The like the glory and Aaron. Um, I can't remember what they are. The tie bears or something like that. Um, Anyways, but yeah, I'm very familiar with those <laughs> Magic Kingdom Disney glasses because I was there when they came out. That's funny. You should have stocked up on them, you know? And Well, I did. And I ended up selling them later on. I was like, ah, these aren't worth anything. So I sold them probably 10, 15 years ago. Maybe I should have held on to them. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that they're, I don't know that they're that valuable that it's worth taking <laughs> up all that shelf space unless you were just a big fan of you know, Disney and all that stuff. So, yeah. Well, not a lot of votes coming in, but right now you swept the first four. I'm sweeping this around, it looks like. Yeah, I see a lot of J's coming in. I, if I had a vote, I would vote Jason on this one too. I would love to pull that shirt home. And as much as I just talked about how I don't mind packing glassware, I, I feel like I got a good rhythm with it. I would still rather sell that shirt, fold it and throw it in a pile yep. and send it out too. But that's a that's a nice piece, man. I dig it. Yeah, glasses and mugs are kind of interesting to ship just because of that small handle or just the small rim. It's just uh, hard to predict what's going to happen. Well, let's go ahead and call that. I don't see a single vote for me. So Jason takes coolest find of the week. Nice job. Very cool find. Uh, final scoreboard, Chris with the shirts for Jason with the shoes one. I got to tell you, when I woke up this morning, I thought that there wasn't a snowball's chance in hell that I was going to win tonight's game. <laughs> and then I, you know, that Magna box and that, you know, the, the shoes came rolling in. And that's crazy about the TV because, you know, Chris, you and I were just talking about it, what, two days ago. And you were like, I just relisted it in a new category. And I didn't, I had no idea that it sold. And bam, there it is. Yeah, that's worth sharing with people if people are interested. Well, I guess they can't say whether they're interested or not. They can't defend themselves. I guess they can tune out. But the story behind that from earlier this week was I had noticed that that Magnavox had been sort of sitting around for, I think it's been listed for almost a month. And I hadn't got any activity on it. And I was like, what's going on? And I didn't really have many views. And then I started kind of, I was, I've noticed on some other items on eBay that the category really matters. Um, and Jason and I talked about this earlier in the week. Sometimes things will sell better if it's listed in the polo shirt category versus the casual shirt category or vice versa. Um, so, or dress shirts is something that we talked about too. So sometimes just changing the category I've found can just move an item really quickly. So I looked and I had it listed in a category called vintage TVs, which would make a lot of sense since it's a vintage TV. But when I looked at the ones that have been selling recently, they were all listed in just the regular TV category, like electronics t slash TV. Um, so I made that change on Tuesday and instantly I saw that my, my item was showing up way high in results. Um, it was off the bottom of the second page or third page um, before moved it into that TV category and it sold in less than two days from making that change. So I spent a lot of time doing uh, maybe not super fun and exciting things like that. Um, Tuesday, um, I did some tax stuff and I did changing categories on like older items and relisting some stuff, um, which isn't exciting, but you know, it, it got me, a, you know, that one sale anyway. So yeah, there it is. I don't know if that's a, that's a super boring story, but 
I mean, that's the difference. <laughs> I mean, that was the difference between that. But I mean, it room. resulted in getting rid of something that's massive sitting in the room next to you and for decent money. Yeah, it literally opened up a space for another bin, which I really needed on one of these shelves here too to get that thing out of here. Um, or yeah. another TV combo, you know? Why not just put another TV combo there? No more. No more. <laughs> <laughs> that, that being said, I have a really hard time saying no to money. So if I found a similar one for two bucks at a garage sale tomorrow morning, I'll probably pick it up and dread it. But you know what? I'll probably like let it sit in my death pile for a few months before listing it because I don't want to pack it. So this is crazy, Chris, but I just got an offer on that Twisted Toucan shirt. No way. Was it? Yes, uh, way. I think Trisha was like, she seemed like she was hot on it in the chat here. So maybe Trisha went in. Uh, is well, Trisha that's not, Trisha, are you, uh, are you offering on this? I'm curious. Either that or um, you, you got, she's better get in on the bidding really quick before. So you I've got it 49.79 plus five shipping offers for 30 plus shipping. So not bad. What do you got to do? Counter that thing? You're probably the only one listed, right? Yeah, I think I think I may counter that. I'm Unless gonna, I know I got, it's someone that's watching, I, I may make a deal if it's someone that's watching us live. I got a number has, in mind for that for that counter. I'm curious what you're thinking. That is so wild that that came in. So um, let's see. I've got it at forty nine seventy nine. I would probably counter that at forty two. Okay. What are you thinking? What would, what would be your number? I was thinking 36 and just get rid of it. Wow. You're thinking go for it. That's just the mode that I've been in for the last six weeks or so. I've been in the mode of just, just getting rid of stuff and not trying to maximize a, a couple bucks here and there. Get it in, get it out. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll counter and then we'll let you know. Maybe it'll be on the show next week as a sale. Yeah. Well, I just don't want you to have the biggest sale of the week. Maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, certain, it all just depends, you know, it's all about like your, your, your goals with it. There's no right answer to that. And that's, oh, of course. You know, yeah. Everyone, you're gonna everyone's going to make money on strategy. it. Um, but yeah, I'm just in that, I'm just in the get rid of it sort of mode right now. Yeah. I hear you on that. But on an item I just listed, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to counter a little higher. Um, reminder that next week we will be back Two flipping dudes. Of course, we're here every Thursday. So if this is your first time watching us and you want to catch us again, come back next week and watch us. Um, and hang with us. Don't just watch us, connect with us, talk to us, ask questions. We have a lot of fun when you guys interact with us and you guys have been fun tonight. So thank you for jumping into this live. And then one last thing, if you will remember to like this show, it's really simple. It helps out the channel and it helps us be seen by others who may be looking for someone to connect with. So give us a like on YouTube. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to Jason's channel, um, not only is Two Flippin' Dudes obviously just engaging awesome content, but he puts out good stuff uh, every week, including, Jason, what was that uh, video that you just put out about the uh, the eBay store levels, which I thought was just awesome. Um, and if you're thinking, like, when is it time for me to, like, upgrade to a store or upgrade my current store to a bigger store, Jason just put out, I think the best like explanation on what to do with that, that I've seen. Um, so you might want to check that out. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button too. So you get notified when Jason goes live and, and when this show happens every week on Thursday. Yeah, thanks. And um, I'll throw up here real quick before we go uh, David's information, just in case you are looking to connect with him on TikTok. That's his store name right there and his handle on TikTok. So go over to TikTok, put that in and watch his videos because he's got really great content and we're all learning from him. So and one last little final tidbit, because um, I know Jason won't do it. If you're if you need some more supplies for for reselling or for flipping or for shipping, Jason has all the stuff that he uses. And really, we use most of the same stuff linked down below. So just go ahead and click on those links. You're going to buy if you're going to buy the stuff anyway. Why not click on those affiliate links uh, that helps support the channel by buying um, through those links and shoot. You don't even have to buy what's linked there. If you're shopping on Amazon, just go ahead and click on one of those links, go into Amazon and then whatever you buy um, that helps support the show financially. So we would definitely uh, appreciate that for sure. Yeah, we definitely do. But well, guys, this has been great. Most importantly, have an awesome weekend, an awesome week ahead. Wishing you wonderful sales, really cool finds, especially like Pokemon Hawaiian shirt finds in your future. Be curious out there and then come back and tell us about the cool stuff you found and flipped. Yep. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next week.
Peace.